morning. So, out here working on it. I worked on it some more last night. Gotta get back to the railroad spike. This is one of the uh, little Ford Model T. Let's see Ford on there. Ford Model T wrenches. And then I'll shave this blade. You know, it's a short wrench, so you don't end up with a lot of blade because you don't want to get into the Ford emblem and everything. So that's one of the ones uh, that parries. And then uh, just cleaned it up. But I got to dig myself over here to my sander fine that helps put the you know a good you know sharp edge on the blade. So I've actually got to dig out some of this stuff here to do that. I really need that damn fan right now. Pretty cold, man. It's early. It's light now. It started off, it wasn't a little light yet. Whew, a little bit quieter that way, too. But that, uh, really turned that on. I'm gonna change out this whole. Hood man, if you if you knew the channel, I don't know if I already said that man. If you knew the channel, welcome to the channel. This is this is the next day, dude. So I have no idea what I talked about yesterday. But this hood out, I have two other hood, you know, real hoods. This one's made out of an old five gallon wash tub, and you know, I ended up putting an insert inside it, used a bucket, and everything, and it does pretty good like this. <clears throat> but uh. I mean, it could be that I need got some blocking and stuff to do up there that might mess with the draw on it. So I don't know if I'll change it, but man, when I get that yesterday, you know, when I heard even this morning, when you get the, uh, right now I just added some logs. I had coal because I was pounding out some stuff. I didn't film that, man. For, uh, I don't know why I did, because I was asleep, dude. Steel. And now I gotta go find my cup of coffee because I set it down, so it's probably iced coffee now. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying. Squirrel! Oh, but now I've actually put some logs, a couple logs on here, man, because, dude, it is cold. I think it was, uh, I don't know, 9 or 10 degrees this morning. It's clear skies out there. The We had, like I said, Musker, man, we had snow, rain, snow, rain, snow, rain. Snow, snow, <laughs> and then it cleared off about the time we went to bed last night, and you could see the moon, you know, there's still clouds, but you could see the moon, and man, start, things started icing up, and it's not supposed to get above freezing today, so it's going to be chilly, but I do want to finish up these knives, so I'll probably just film a little bit while I'm doing that. Um, right now, I'm going to, well, right, right this second... Grab a cup of coffee, man, because I'm getting ready to go grab mine. I got to find it. And then I'm going to clear this. And then I want to finish up these knives. You know, and I've been working so much on the trading post trying to get it organized. Why well, I didn't do a bunch of this stuff, you know, during the, uh, I mean, they're just busy, man. But during the, uh, before the winter really hit, it's Kai, he's bringing a ball. You know, so you can put this, set some of this stuff outside, you know, and organize. I've actually been kicking around. I think I'm going to, we'll see what happens next year. i got quite a few plans for the springtime. I'm going to try to do a few projects, you know, obviously, always doing projects. But I think I'm going to end up putting my, uh, I think I'm going to put the smithy shop. I think I'm going to build one just specifically the smithy shop and just have this more of a, workshop area and put the smithy shop out farther for one thing man you know when you got open fire like that all the time and yes there's metal around it and there's gravel down on the ground and all that kind of jazz but when you're using you know, your anvils on an old log there's a big old burn hole over there um, and, I, and a friend of mine which actually lives on Kitty's family's homestead his wife is some some cousin down the thing, but the original homestead in this county was Kitty's family, and they have a blacksmithy shop there, 
and the original one caught on fire man and burned to the ground but it was away from all the other buildings and the big barn and everything like that you kind of want to keep your smithy shop away from other other stuff and this one this one here it's right in the middle of everything so something i've been kicking around the, the things you ponder is an old hillbilly all right so right now i'm gonna actually i'm going to find my car. It's cold out here, man. I'm getting ready to put a... Jeez, man, I ain't got a place to set this mother down. One thing, I want to set it on the metal, man. It'll cool it down quick. So that, uh... So clean that one up a little bit. See, now I got to work the edge some here. Probably do a... And one of the things is the knives, uh, you know, each one's a one of a kind, man. Anytime you pound something out and uh, they kind of just take a shape and do their own, uh, their own thing. That's one of the things I love about them. You know, that's on any knives or anything you're pounding out, man, whether it be the wrench knives or the railroad spike knives or the trap springs knives. So I'm going to work my way. I got this area cleared here, you can't see it in front of the brush and grinder there. Brush, I use a, to clean my stuff up on the, I got on the grinder, man, I've got a brass wire brush because the brass, depending on the steel or the, or whatever you're using, you know, whether you're doing a knife blade or uh, whatever, the brass won't scratch up your Scratch up your metal or steel or iron or whatever you want to call it. So, man, I use a wire on all that, man, by junking, you know, and all that, man. I've had people ask, man, I want to see more junking. Um, I use the wire, man, I have three or four grinders with different, you know, wheels, man, different size, different, you know, of course, I've got the one with the metal, you know, that just really rips and tears, but the brass brushes you know and then I got hand brushes too man the brass brushes I use man I would all the all the time <laughs> not too bad here get this fire ripping what the heck's going on I wish I had a kind of blower like this on my wood stoves I can put this one right here, man. <laughs> Get it out of the dang road. This is one of the ones I got two that I need to rebuild. One's for Kevin. And then one, the one on the stand out there is probably for Kevin. Dude, I have so much crap I can't even set this thing down. Need to get to that. Let me see the sander right there, that little delta. Not so bad. I do the fine, you know. Before I really sharpen it up, I do the. Uh, I'm putting the bevel and everything on it with that. Oh, look at that old. I was just reading an article on these old. That old hatchet, hatchet hammer. Nail puller. They've used, if you look at that handle real close, they've used like a shovel handle 
uh, to make put a put it on a handle, and then they whittle this, whittle this down here. I'm gonna rehandle it, but I like kind of like the rawness of it. So we'll see. We'll see, man. There's another one too. I collect them. My wife, she says I'm a collector of collections. <laughs> Good looking. Hello. And another one. What's this one here? This one here is a. Uh... Ten minutes, sweet ready. Ooh, all right. I'll be there. Is that a date? Huh? What did you say? So is that a date? Yes, it is. All right. Castile. This is lemon. This one I use all the time. Get my eyeballs out here. Yeah, I know you got on here to watch some freaking forging, man. Yeah. Whoa, dude, look at that thing leaking. Uh, or, uh, it's not drawing very good, is it? I just stole it. Never did put a cap. I got to get out there and put a cap on that mother. This one's a. Uh, this one is a C. Hammond, Philadelphia, Castile number two. That's a good one, man. That's a good one, man. It ain't going nowhere either. It's going right here. Oh. Right here. <laughs> Dude, the pitch is froze. I'm not even sticking the pitch. Dude, I'm getting closer, man. Getting closer. I don't know if you can see all these handles. All but this one handle that I just stuck in here, those are all hatchets, axes, sledgehammers. I love all that stuff, man. Well, that old hillbilly got a lot of junk. <sighs> Ten minutes to breakfast. It's Sissy's birthday. She's over there with Mima. She spent the night because the kids went down in a blizzard to get her birthday present. So we ended up, uh, she hung out with us for the night. So she just woke up with her birthday. So Miss Kitty's over there, fixed her, her favorite French toast on homemade bread, bacon. And uh, see these? I scored these, man. I actually found these. Man, where did I get these things? That's the barrel, you know, pieces of the barrel. A little whiskey barrel. And man, I found these. And too, they'd, uh, there was a bunch of them that they'd cut up, you know, they're oak. And they'd cut them up. See, and I've got. One more down there, so I got four, at least four pieces. <clears throat> and I found these in an old, uh, an old camp. Way in there. The other ones, like I said, had cut up, man. There was partial burnt ones in an old fire pit and everything. I can't remember where I picked them up exactly, but man, there's almost enough to do, a, you know, like a partial wall decoration or. Something, something. <laughs> Dude, that's the problems I held on to everything. Oh, Dad, you can do that. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. I'm gonna keep them. Super, I'm gonna keep them on. Oh, I'll be looking for those. Old feet dirt for the for the boot dryers. Old polling chainsaw. I can probably pump that up and fire that bad boy up right now. It's a pretty good old saw. Nothing like the husky, but it sure ain't going nowhere either. Whoa, dude! You almost took a tumble, son. Almost took a tumble. Right, about a 
Dude, I'm almost to my... Hey, the chainsaw on a stick. makes little skinner knives out of it. Then when I started working on this, man, I didn't bring the blade down. Like I said, these things start to... I just kind of follow whatever they... You know, whatever the metal would be one with the iron. Just kind of follow what it does. This one's, uh... This one's turning into more of a little skinner knife, too. Kind of an oddball shape to it. But, hey, man. Is what it is, man. That's the that's the knife I'm working on right now. Now I've got them not all beveled, but got the beginning of the bevel. You know, working all that crap in together uh, is one of the tricks of the whole. There's another one, man. Look at this one. This is a cool one, freaking head. So now I gotta move the rest of this crap here. There's the one, man. This, uh, if you use one of these, man, I'll tell you what, dude. It's got a little chainsaw chain on it for the grinder. Woo, man, them little mothers are, they're scary little mothers to use. That's what I'd use. I don't know if I ever showed it on video or whatever, man, but when I was doing lodge pulling carvings and stuff. I used one of these. And you definitely want your guard on here because you will take off, man. This thing will shoot into your freaking your fingers. But then I got that little, my little steel chainsaw, man. That does away with this thing for the most part. Still keep it around just in case. Just in case. Because I'm hoping to get back to the projects and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of that stuff, man, building the... Just still got a long ways to go on it too. It'll never be done, you know, as far as the the homestead and everything. There's always always new things and things you gotta maintain and things you gotta do. Kinda like that gable right there. I need to address that, so I need to get all this clear. But I really want to get back, man, because I used to make the you know, if you look back at my videos, man, I used to make uh, Native American flutes. I used to fr make twig furniture and wingback chairs and lodgepole furniture and knives and um, some leather stuff. You know, man, just used to do all that. And a lot of that is uh, got put on the got put on the sidelines for. <laughs> building a life, man. Building a homestead. Homestead definitely takes over your life. So. Oh, man. Two old service station lights. Globes. Don't wire it up. Use them, man. Use them. Oh, there's another. Saw man, got that one we were doing. Me and my good brother, so I have one that's just the biggest walking piece of trash there that exists. But uh, we were doing, we were installing doors for Home Depot years ago. We had a construction business. And man, we'd get that. We got these Japanese cutoff saws, man. We we're installing doors to cut off the bottom. And they're great. And some of the stuff, man, you see me, you know, I'm just stacking it close. And that's, I actually need to get on the other end of this heaping pile. 
And I'm trying to get tools, hand tools and stuff separated out of all of this crap. That's some new and horse hair. What the heck do I have some new in there? Some of the things I do, and then you come back out like, what the hell? <laughs> a piece of log that I, yeah, that's beautiful. I hold on to to do something with, something or rather with. It's beautiful piece. I'm it over here. Holy crap, dude! And the metal is pulled away right there on that gable. Some snow coming in. So there's another. There's another thing on the list. Good night. I really dropped the ball on. Well, at least I think I did. I picked up a oh, an estate sale. And it was at this log cabin. Now in the garage, man, it was a case of caulking. That was the chink caulking for the logs. I picked up this whole case of it. And... I don't know where I put it, man. If it froze, it's all done. So I may have lost that whole case. I didn't pay a ton of money for it, but I still would like it. I can see right here, man, my spray paints. Get those they still felt like they were right there up off the ground, so that might have... Might have saved them. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, these girly gloves, those are. I'm just going to show you these. Uh, you know, I always talk about picking up things. Fasteners and this whole basket. Whole basket right here. Picking them, but I was talking to you about saving money and buying, you know, all your fasteners and screws and hinges and braces and brackets and all that. Well, this stuff here, I ended up picking it up at a junk shop. You know, like this old plate, man. These are all frame, mostly framing, different framing plates and stuff. Man, look at that, and I paid ten cents a piece. You go, man. I don't know, probably three bucks, two or three bucks a piece. At the uh, store, look at this old. Ooh. Look at this old hatch, man. I paid uh, 25 cents. Yeah, price that thing. That's just basically an example, man. That's just one one basket, man. And I pick up this kind of crap all the time. And like I said, you go to a <coughs> go to an estate sale. You always want to go out to the to the garage and the the sheds, man. That's where, as far as I'm concerned, where some of the best stuff is. Some resale stuff out there too, man, but a lot of stuff that you can use for yourself. That's great. That's the bearings for my four-wheeler. I've gotten rusted on the back. That's great. Oh. The other thing I pick up, man, at the, the junk shops is rag, bags of rags. I don't want to pay. One price tag on it. This bag of rags was 99 cents, and I've already used a bunch. A lot of times, man, they'll have bags of old T-shirts and everything, you know, for sale there. Good stuff, dude. Good stuff. The propane hose. Man, I got some good crap. Oh, this man, it's still in the box. Still in the box, man. An old uh, wet grind, wet sharpening, wet hone, wet stone machine. And then, uh, well, it's been used, but not a lot. I picked that thing up somewhere. For uh, five bucks, I got another one just like it. So we're in there, great little 
sharpen the stones. Alright, now I need to do something with these jars right here. Oh, I got a whole thing of jars. What I really like to do is decide it out and kind of buff it up. Shine. I don't like to get too crazy with it. But I do like to get a little bit of a you know, shine through it. Maybe I'm a twist. Doing too much of that stuff like on the Ford knife, you don't want to take it. Dude, I took the Ford right off one time trying to sign it up. Oh man, I just love the texture look of that. Love that. Get that, uh, put it in the glasses and get that edge. I don't know how well you see on this one. You can see the bevel that I've done. And I'm sending out some of the marks. And then we'll get a good point to it. Pretty cool looking back. Definitely a smaller blade than a lot of the ones I made. You never know what you're gonna get. Kind of like a box of So this really ain't a, like a how-to, you know, or showing the start-to-finish video or nothing like that. Showed a little bit, man. So, uh, I'm going to suck it out and smoke a little crap. I got to change it. Oh, yeah, man, I've got to clear it here. I can dance. <laughs> so, got pairs out. I still got to finish up. Still got to finish up the edge. Got to get my glasses and get out the stone. So I actually hooked that machine right there up, wood stone it, and uh, be doing the drawing. We're in there talking a minute ago, talking about other things. Like I said, I think I'm gonna give away about four things. There. Now you ain't got that glare in the back behind you. Much, baby. 
All right, so we were, I was over there when we had breakfast, man. Me and Miss Kitty were talking about the drawing. So, obviously, the railroad spike knife. Talking about maybe a gift certificate to our eBay store. I don't know, 25 bucks or something. Uh, um, probably a t shirt. Or something else, man. I think we're going to give away four items. The drawing. Probably. <coughs> He's killing me. Probably not tomorrow. <coughs> today is Sissy's birthday. We're actually doing the birthday party tomorrow. So, probably won't do the drawing tomorrow, but maybe Sunday. And then, Perry, your knife should be sent out. I will have them. We'll have them done by Monday, man. I'll be shipping them. Or shipping that knife out by Monday. Um... Yeah, man. I'm just going to keep at it. And, man, I'm pretty happy to have this area right here cleared. I'm going to get this cleared out. And I'm just going to kind of push the, you know, I don't remember who it was. I think it was Art saying, you may have shit from one place to another. Welcome to a junker's life. <laughs> and so, like I said, I'm putting it in here. And then I'm actually going to go on that other side. And, and I've got a couple of bins. I've been throwing all my hand tools that ain't in my toolboxes. But man, I have, I have every tool that you'd probably, you know, ever need for anything that I do. But yet, can I find them? Not most of the time. So, I'm working on that. I want to get all my tools up because I got my toolbox over there. And I've got the wood tools over here. And I got the metal tools over here. And I got the electric tool, you know. So, try to dial all that, dial all that stuff on. Something I plan on doing this winter. In between doing the trading posts, the junk shed out back, and in here, I'm a busy man. And right now, I actually, one of the reasons I'm ending this video is my wood supply, man. And when you heat 100% with wood, uh, that's pretty dang important. It's not snowing today. It is cold. Not supposed to get above freezing, so it'll be it'll be fun out there. I might uh, end up filming some of that out there too. But get ready, man. That drawing is coming. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Good old crazy winch. Crazy man. Um, check out the links below, oh, man. Make sure you go over. I put another video on Patreon and getting ready I'm going to do another another one here in the next couple of days actually that long video I did I ended up chopping it up and putting it on there in pieces until I figure all that out so get over there to Patreon man join or sub or whatever they call it over there need to spend some more time on that too and check out the links below and the eBay store I think I already said that the t-shirts man the one with my new uh, Idaho Hillbilly logo. We got a couple of orders right now. Just email uh, Idaho Hillbilly at yahoo.com and then, and however you want to do the payment thing. Like I said, $25, that's shipped. That's to you. 25 bucks. And that, that is all, that all goes to Katie Jo, my daughter. Because she's the one that, you know, is making the shirts and doing all that. So that. That all just goes to her, so that helps support my grandkids, man. So buy a shirt. <laughs> That's all I got, man. Good Lord willing. And them creeks don't rise. We'll be back again tomorrow. See ya.